shall investigate the convergence of an infinite series. In this case, we consider a harmonic series and show that it is divergent. We shall do that by comparing it with the improper integral of 1 over x from 1 to infinity. Let's sketch the function 1 over x as shown here. And we shall sketch rectangular strips in this manner. Now, the first rectangular strip has an area of 1. The second rectangular strip has an area of half. The third rectangular strip has an area of one third. We continue in a similar manner and we see the area of the fourth rectangular strip is a quarter and so on. From here, we conclude that the sum of the area of all such rectangular strips equals to the infinite summation of 1 over k, which we know as the harmonic series. Now for each strip, we see that the area is higher than the area under the curve. The area under the curve is colored by yellow color here. Hence, we conclude that the area of all rectangular strips should be greater than or equals to the area under the curve from 1 to infinity. And the curve is none other than the graph of y equals 1 over x. Now, if you calculate this improper integral, we have the limit of the integral from 1 to m, when m approaching infinity, of 1 over x dx. This will give us ln x from 1 to m We calculate the limit It is unbounded and hence the series, the infinite series, have to be divergent to infinity as well. So, the harmonic series is divergent. The technique we just seen to show that harmonic series is divergent is called the integral test. Here is the theorem. If AK, the term of the series equals to fk, the value of a function f for every integer k, where f is a positive, continuous, and decreasing function for x greater than or equals to 1. Then, if we compare the infinite series and the improper integral, either both converge or both diverge. In many cases, it is easier to calculate the improper integral. And then from there, we conclude whether our infinite series converge or diverge. We have seen the divergent case. Now let us discuss the convergent case. The idea of this theorem or the integral test is to calculate the area under the curve of fx and compare it with the infinite sum or the area of rectangular strips. So let's say this is fx which will be positive, continuous and decreasing for x greater than 1. Now we are going to sketch rectangular strips in this manner. 
The first rectangular strips have an area of A2. Then continue by this rectangular strip, which has an area A3, followed by this one, which has an area of A4. If we continue, we know it will have area A5, A6, A7, and so on. Hence, the sum of all these rectangular strips will be the infinite series of AK from 2 onwards. Now, if it is going to be convergent, we can add A1 to it, and then we will get the original infinite series from A1 all the way to infinitely many terms. Now, let's take a look now, compare with the area under the curve. Here. And what we see in this situation is the area under the curve is greater. So the series is smaller than or equals to the area, which is the integral from 1 to infinity of fx dx. Now, if the integral convergent that is finite, it follows that the infinite summation also finite. That is to say, it is convergent. Let us now use the integral test to show the convergence of the P-series. Let us first choose a function, fx, which in this case should be 1 over x to the power p, if we compare to the term in the series, which I can write at x to the power negative p. And this function is obviously positive, continuous, and decreasing for p greater than 0. We now calculate the integral from 1 to infinity of x to the power negative p dx, which will give us the limit of x to the power 1 minus p over 1 minus p. Simplifying, we get limit of m to the power 1 minus p over 1 minus p minus 1 over 1 minus p. Now we have seen the case where p equals to 1, that is the harmonic series. So now we just consider the case where p is not equals 1. Let's focus our attention to the limit and we calculate the limit of m to the power 1 minus p. In other words, I can rewrite as the limit of 1 over m to the power p minus 1. Now, using the principle earlier on about limit x tends to infinity or limit m tends to infinity, we know that this limit will vanish to 0 if p minus 1 is positive, in other words, p is greater than 1, and will be divergent to infinity if p minus 1 is less than 0, or p is less than 1. And hence, we conclude that the improper integral will be convergent and equals to negative 1 over 1 minus p if p is greater than 1. And will be divergent to infinity for p less than 1. Thus, the result follows from the integral test.